the X9C series digital potentiometer. Previously, we looked at this with a function generator to control the signals directly, and then we hooked it up directly to a rotary encoder to control the pot going up or down in resistance. I'll link to those videos below. But now, I want the digital pot to be controlled by the Arduino. And a whole bunch of buttons. Let's see what we can do with this. This is the circuit I came up with. It's not as bad as it looks. So I have an ohm meter connected between the wiper terminal and the high terminal on the X9C. And I put a 0.1 micro decoupling capacitor on the plus and ground pins just for good practice. And I'm powering it from the Arduino's 5 volt out. Just quickly looking at the data sheet again for this digital pot X9C series. I'm powering it from 5 volts. Mine does say on it X9C103, which is 10K, but mine's actually 100K. So it should have said 104. I'm not sure what happened. And the setup, it's just an 8-pin device. So VCC and VSS get 5 volts and ground straight off of Arduino. Then we have three control pins going to Arduino. The chip select, increment, and up or down mode are outputs from Arduino. And then we just have three pins left. It's the W, the wiper, L is the low, and H is the high of the three terminal pot. There are 100 positions from 0 to 99, and depending which position we're at, our three terminal resistor will have the wiper moving between all of these values of low and high resistance. The Arduino here in this code example can also implement the feature to store the current wiper position. So when we power back on, the wiper position will be recalled. I found there's a couple of X9C libraries, but I liked this one. So over on GitHub, I had to download this and then install it. So I saved my zip file somewhere, and then in the include library menu, I chose add zip library and navigated to my file and it got it all set up in here. When we increment in the up direction, we are moving the wiper toward the high terminal. And they give a little example here of how they are thinking about this. If you choose the command to set the pot to minimum, set pot minimum gives you a minimum resistance between wiper and high. In order to get the minimum resistance between wiper and high, this wiper has to be all the way up here, and then the only resistance you have is the wiper resistance from the data sheet. In my case, that's 40 something ohms. So set pot min gives minimum resistance, but it's our maximum count for our wiper position. So once I got that sorted out, that was okay. Digging down into the actual source of this X9C code, normally I'll skip stuff like this unless there's something we gotta make sure we configure down here. Let's say you want it to go to 50% of the wiper, then you want it to go to 20% of the wiper, whatever you're currently at when you wanna go first to 50, it'll shoot all the way down, then it'll shoot up to 50. Then you call it, you wanna go to 20, it'll shoot all the way down again and then shoot up 20. And so it kind of bounces off the bottom wall and that's how it knows where it's at. But if you do want to do a relative position move, they have this other trim pot and that lets you go just that certain amount away from where you currently are, just move by a certain amount in a certain direction. And again, do you wanna save this new position or not? So now instead of slamming it all the way down and then incrementing it back up to get to your exact position, it'll just go a couple up or down whatever you specifically want to do from where you're at. And when you want to save or not save, they call one or the other save function or not save. So first, step pot, whether you're slamming it all the way down or you're actually doing the follow-up where you move it specifically back the amount you want, you pass through information about the amount you want to move the wiper and in what direction. There's a little check here to make sure you're not going to go further than the maximum steps available, even though it really doesn't matter because it'll just lock at the maximum. It doesn't wrap around, so I don't even know why this is being done, but whatever. I guess it's more efficient if you accidentally try to make it go 10,000 and you only have 0 to 99. You don't want to waste time going all of those extras. You just clamp it at the maximum. 
So you set the pins for the correct direction you want to move, then you activate the chip select, and as many times as you want it to move, you'll just toggle the increment low and high. When you're done, you give it a little delay so the wiper itself can settle and the datasheet says it's 100 microseconds. Then you come out of that and the next thing you're doing is either saving or not saving the wiper. Depending if you want to save the wiper or not, you have the two different routines here because chip select being pulled high, disabling the chip. If increment is low while chip select goes high, you're not going to save the wiper. But the last thing you do here, if increment stays high when you've finished moving the wiper, if you want to save, you just simply take chip select high, disable the chip while increment is still high, and you will save the value of the wiper. I think this is where I discovered a bit of a bug, and I think if I were writing this, I would have done this a little differently. I hacked it like this, and this seems to work for me. So since I'm only really just playing around with this, I'm not really going to save a copy of these changes. I will mention them in the comments of my main source code, but ultimately long term, if I were going to use a library like this for this pot, I'd probably want to rewrite it a little better and not have a hack. Not that I know how to write better code, but I would just restructure it in a different way that I would be more comfortable. So for now, the changes will be in the comments, but when you go and use this library, if you use it, you will have to go and make changes to this. So it's just something I wanted to point out. So here's the GitHub X9C library, and the last commit as of now was June 8, 2017. And I'm making this comment here in my version of this. The X9C CPP file from this copy of the source needs to have these two functions changed as written here in order to work as it works for me. So x9c deselect and save has all these extra steps and then step pot has this amount changed to amount minus one. With that out of the way I'm including that library with my little modification and the bounce to debounce library for those push buttons. Here's all of my pins. The three pins for the pot are the chip select, increment, and the up down mode. And then these other buttons. We have a button for directly changing the pot wiper down to the minimum point, halfway to the midpoint, and all the way to the maximum point where these mean the resistances between wiper and the high terminal, not the wiper position relative to high terminal. So minimum means minimum resistance or the highest count. The wiper is as close as it can get to the high terminal. Another button will increase or decrease the wiper position by 10 units out of 0 to 99, just from where it is right now and another couple of buttons to increase or decrease by just one wiper position from where it is now. So in that bounce to library, I'm going to use 10 millisecond for my debounce time. It's just a number I chose and it seemed to work. So I'm adding just a db at the end of the same pin names for if I'm debouncing my up, down, mid, max, etc. buttons. And here we are, we have to initialize the pot routine. So all we're doing is setting up those three control pins and we're configuring all of our push button inputs with pull-ups, assigning all of these push button pins into the debounce routines. Now that we're ready to go, all we're really doing is looping forever, updating a reading of all these buttons and debouncing them. And if we have detected a falling edge of a button, we do something with pull-ups and then the buttons themselves connecting to ground. When we push a button and generate a falling edge, that's when we want an action to occur after, of course, being debounced. So that's what we're looking for here. So if we triggered the button for setting the pot to the minimum resistance value, we want to call the pot control function to set the pot to minimum. And we don't want to save the state. We just want to move the pot wiper. If we want to just go up by 10 or down by 10 or up by 1 or down by 1, we use the trim pot to move by that amount 
up or down, and it'll just go discreetly from wherever it is by that amount in that direction. These routines here set the pot to min or max or set it to some target value, a specific setting. These are the routines that slam the pot all the way to minimum and then bring it back or leave it at minimum as needed. These other ones where we want to just go a relative position away, use the trim pot. So in this case, I just wanted to embed a second function to actually save the wiper position when we move up by 10 units. So this moves the pot by 10 up and stores the setting in the chip. So at this point, after we power off and on, whatever the final position is here after we move by 10, that's going to be the recall resistance when we power off and on. So we have enough buttons here to fully control this pot. We can go all the way low, mid, high. We can go just by one up or down, and we can skim it about 10% up or down. Let's see how it works. So I have seven push buttons here that are active low. They hit ground when I push them, otherwise they have internal pull-ups. They are being debounced. So I'm detecting a falling edge with debounce on each button. And so when I'm measuring the resistance between the wiper and the high terminal, when I push a button to go downward, what I'm doing is moving the wiper closer to the high terminal that I'm probing. And that makes the resistance between those two go down. I have the digital pot turned off right now. There's no power. So it's going 23, 24 megs because there's no contact with the wiper. If I power the chip, it powers up with the last saved resistance of, in this case, it was 52K. And I can do that again, power off, and then power back on, and it will come back to the saved state, 52K. So all these buttons, going from left to right, every time I push each button, I can either go down by one level, up by one level, down by 10, up by 10, and this up by 10 has a secondary function of saving the state, just so I can test it. And then we have jump to the absolute maximum resistance, jump to the middle point of the resistance, and jump straight to the bottom resistance. So these are just shortcuts that I can test things out. So let me try going to the minimum resistance. And now I have 46 and a half ohms because there's a minimum wiper resistance in the data sheet. If I hit the maximum resistance button, this particular 100K resistor with its tolerance has 106.5K. If I hit the middle button, it should be about half of this, which is close to 53K. And it goes to 53.4. So now if I go down one step, it's about 1K per step. So 53.4 goes down, 52.3, 51.3, 50 50.2. So we're starting to actually go a little bit more than 1K. It's about 1.1K in the center range of this pot. So 50.2 goes down 49.1. So we went down again 1.1K. In this area, if you go down by 10, you might actually go down by 11k, but you're really going 10 steps, so that's fine. So let's try that. 49.1 going down by 10 steps, 38.2, so we went more than 10k, but that's fine because it's a 106k pot, so we went down 10 steps. Now if we hit the button to go up 10 steps, and then at the same time it'll save that final resistance point, we go up to 49.1K, and that should be stored now. So I take away power, bring it back, 49.1K. Just to test it again, I'll jump to the maximum, turn it off, turn it on, 49.1K. So the save function is working, and it looks like every other feature is working. So that's an example of using the digital pot in this case, just as a two-terminal resistor with the ohm meter across from wiper to the high terminal, and the low terminal is left unconnected in this case. We're just checking that we can get the resistance. 
but you could throw this as a three terminal pot into practically anything else that can use a pot, like a volume control or a motor speed control or current limit set point, an op amp feedback gain controller, a resistor that changes the tone on a tone generator or frequency generator. But the only thing to be cautious about is, especially for something like a volume control, if you don't know what state this wiper is going to power up in, and it could actually end up with something like a volume control set for full blast before you can actually get the software to configure it, or if it allows too much current to go through a motor driver chip before you can get a hold of it and it actually somehow powers up not in a safe state and it's running full blast, you might cause some damage. So you have to be careful how you do use this. And worst case, if you do have an application where the resistance is critical and you have to be in control of it, maybe you could do something like have another output path that you can enable or disable with like a FET or something so that you power up, you configure this, get it safe, and then enable it to actually connect to the rest of the circuit. But overall, this has a lot of potential and I'm going to be finding a good use for this.